The book of Leviticus in the Bible says that homosexuality is an abomination and so it can't possibly be right for Christians. You've heard this? Keep watching to find out why I disagree. There are two verses from Leviticus which figure in the debates over the Bible and homosexuality. The first is Leviticus 18.22 which says, You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. And the second one is similar. It comes from Leviticus 20.13. If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall be put to death. Their blood is upon them. To understand these verses, we need to know a little bit about the background to them. First of all, though, some general points about this section of Leviticus, because this section between chapters 17 and 26 is often called the Holiness Code, because there's the emphasis throughout it on holiness, on being holy, on being pure. And so what you eat, what you do, what you are, all these things can affect how holy you are, how pure you are. And so eating the wrong food makes you less holy. Having a tattoo makes you less holy. Wearing clothes from different fibres like wool and linen together makes you less holy. Even having a physical disability makes you less holy. What's going on here? In part, the Holiness Code is encouraging the Israelite people to be pure, to be separate from, to be different from their pagan worshipping neighbours. And everyday life becomes a symbol of that purity, that holiness. The Israelite people are not to assimilate to surrounding cultures, just as different types of fibres shouldn't be in the same cloth. So what's going on in the two verses that we're looking at? First of all, these verses are only addressed to males. There's no mention here of two women. Secondly, how are the Israelite people going to be distinct from, different from their neighbours by putting these into practice? Well, in the surrounding cultures, the major socially acceptable form of same-sex activity was with male shrine prostitutes as part of temple worship to pagan gods and goddesses. And there's repeated rhetoric against these shrine prostitutes at different parts of the Hebrew Bible. Looking wider afield, there were cultures like ancient Greece, where the dominant form of male-male intercourse was older, usually married men, with boys, pederasty. And did you notice that the verses said, a man lying with a male, not a man lying with a man? Now, occasionally I've seen some commentators claim that this is trying to link it back to Genesis, male and female, he created them. But if so, it's rather strange that female isn't used. It's as with a woman, not female. I think it more likely that male is used here precisely because it can include lying with boys as well as men. So two main contexts for the Israelite people to be different from. Male-male intercourse linked with pagan temple goddess worship and pederasty. Note how different these are from what we're looking at today with faithful, loving, committed relationships. So if we take these two verses seriously as a guide for Christian life, we have to understand the context in which they would have been heard. But there's actually a much bigger issue here. If you're Christian rather than Orthodox Jewish, why are you assuming that you have to obey these verses anyway? Because if you're going to obey these verses strictly, then why not the whole verse? Leviticus 20.13 says, They shall be put to death. Do you want the death penalty for homosexuality? If you don't, you're ignoring part of the verse. If you do, are you consistent? Do you also want the death penalty for adulterers? That's from just three verses before. And what about tattoos? Should everyone with a tattoo be cut off from the community? Or what about clothes with mixed fibres? I hope you don't have any cotton polyester blends in your wardrobe. And don't even get me started on ham and cheese sandwiches. The first church argument was about whether non-Jewish Christians had to keep the law, the Torah, of which Leviticus is a part. It forms a backdrop to some of Paul's letters and the Acts of the Apostles. And the outcome? Christians don't have to keep the law. Why not? Because with the arrival of the Messiah, Jesus, the time of the law has come to an end. 
we've been given a new law, the law of love. Love God and love your neighbour. So it doesn't matter whether you get a tattoo or wear a cotton polyester blend or work on a Saturday, which is the Sabbath. The only thing that matters is whether what you're doing is loving. I sometimes get people asking, but the part these verses are in deal with sexual morality. And surely that doesn't change, that's constant. Well, just three verses away it says, You shall not approach a woman to uncover her nakedness while she is in her menstrual uncleanness. Or to be more direct, no intercourse during her period. For Leviticus, this is sexual immorality. It is just as bad, just as abominable, as a man lying with a male. Yet I've never heard any warnings about not having intercourse during a period in any sermon, haven't come across it in any Christian book or Christian marriage preparation course. Why not? Because we don't think it applies because the time of the law has come to an end. The only law is the law of love. To recap, the context for the verses is intercourse with male shrine prostitutes at temples to pagan goddesses, or intercourse between married men and boys. But in any case, it doesn't matter. Christians don't look to Leviticus for particular rules for life. Christ has given us the only rule we need, love one another. So if I'm honest, I don't really understand the appeal to Leviticus as meaning that homosexuality is condemned by God. Why pluck these two particular verses out of Leviticus and then ignore the rest of it? Leviticus does not mean that homosexuality is an abomination. This is part of a series of videos looking at the Bible and homosexuality. If that interests you, subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to find out some more background, there's a companion website at bibleandhomosexuality.org. Thanks for watching.